it's me, Stormy, and here's your horoscope for March 2018. So, Leo, before we jump in, I hope you have taken advantage of your 36,000 subscriber gift, as well that you're signed up for $3 Thursday, Astrology 102, all of that good stuff. Everything is in the description box down below, and of course, at stormygrace.com. All right, Leo, so this month we have got sign changes, we've got retrogrades, we've got all of that going on, but all of them seem to really be working towards your benefit this month and putting you in a position of a fair amount of success or at least really strong insight that you can do something with, which I think is beautiful. Now, we've got Jupiter taking a retrograde this month all the way until July, so this four-month nap will delay some things for sure, but because Jupiter's our biggest benefic planet, he's our biggest planet, shoot, as a whole, he's still giving out good vibes, good juju, good opportunities. They're just coming a little bit more slowly, but you've also got a couple things chalked up right here in the first six days um, of the month before we get to this retrograde that I think are in your benefit. We've also got Mercury, our planet of communication, taking a retrograde this month on the 22nd all the way until April. Now, when Mercury goes retrograde, communication, communication devices, our thinking, our decision-making, all of these things come under a a little bit of a fog. They're kind of backwards. You may find yourself having to do work again. So slow down, pay attention during this time. And Mercury retrograde is absolutely absolutely infamous for bringing back people from the past. Now, if if the old lover you just don't want to come back shows up even in a memory, right? Evaluate it. Look at it. See what it's trying to show you. Don't just be like, "Ooh, no." Not today, Satan. Okay, don't do that. Look at what it's trying to show you and then let it go, okay? And if somebody physically does present themselves to you, for some people, you're going to be overjoyed if they do. For some of you, an educational or a licensing or a learning or a philosophy opportunity will be ushering itself back in and you don't want to let that go. Sometimes we weren't ready for what happened before. You'll know today if you're ready, okay? So Mercury retrograde gonna be a trip, but use it well. You know I teach, celebrate your retrogrades because as we look back, re-edit, revise, reconnect, um, re-experience, we're doing it for a purpose and that is to untangle that junk over there and move forward. We've also got Venus and Mercury moving into Aries, Mars coming into Capricorn, and as we get towards the end of the month, Venus will make her way to Taurus, plus three moons this month, two of them only, which are full. So let's start to talk about this, okay? Right here at the beginning of the month on the first, we have got the full moon happening at 11 degrees of Virgo. For you, this is in the second house, but this moon for you is receiving a fair amount of support from Saturn. That is important to understand because the full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted, right? Usually bringing a culmination, something to an end. Always a shift, but usually it's about ending. So a full moon in the second house can mean that your income dries up right? But getting and receiving the support from Saturn this time, I think actually helps you ground your finances and it shows you value, your value. Do you need to change your prices? Do you have a skill or a talent? The second house is also about our talents, right? Do you have a talent you could be putting out there that you could actually monetize that has value in your world in some way, shape, or form? This is hitting the income sector, so it could turn back into um, financial gain for sure. If you've been looking for a job as well, I think that your talents at this full moon and for the next couple days really in the height of it are actually spotlighted, spotlit. So you maybe want to go out there and put yourself out there and, and remain to be seen because this is actually a very positive energy for you. Now, as we continue to travel just a couple days, I want to tell you from really the first all the way until about the 5th. And I really wouldn't push it any further than the 5th. You have got Mercury and Venus both in your 8th house, okay? This is wonderful because if it's taxes, insurance, any of that kind of stuff, you're just, you're handling it like butter, right? Venus is making it smooth. Mercury's got clear communication at this point, although it's a little bit slowed down because it's in shadow phase. Um, Maybe you've got income coming from a source that you did not earn, which could be taxes, could be your partner's taxes, could be anything, sponsorships, right? If you need to handle joint resource stuff, 
get it done now please don't wait until that mercury retrograde please don't do that if you can handle it now go ahead and get it done because you actually have the blessing of the cosmos to help you here now on the sixth mercury and venus take that move into your ninth house so now it's in aries communication information moves more quickly venus is not always comfortable with this mars energy right so while she's kind of being flung and sped up in a way that she doesn't exactly enjoy, she is open-minded enough. She's going to bring diplomacy if you've got legal situations to handle. Um, philosophy, if you've been trying to find your way back to faith, if you've been struggling with your faith, this is a wonderful energy to kind of open and soften your heart so that you can see what you need to look at. Education, school, licensing, any of those kinds of things fall under, if you needed to redo, I want to say this too, even with Mercury and Venus having moved into this ninth house, if you needed to finish business with a mortgage or a lease because maybe you're moving, wonderful time for that as well, okay? Now on the 8th, Jupiter is going to take this retrograde in the sign of Scorpio. For you, this is looking back over the 4th house space. Home, family, real estate, property, more importantly, Jupiter is the planet of wisdom. So while you could be re-looking over where do you live, is it time to move, all of these things, as Jupiter turns into this retrograde, you'll also be looking at your internal structures. What does the internal home look like? You know, right? Because you really can't help too many people if your own house isn't in order. And if your own house, your thinking, your thoughts, your emotional security doesn't have the light of some wisdom shed on it, you never change we never move forward right we never speak to our own heart our own joy celebrate these talents that we have instead we can use them as holdbacks so jupiter really kind of turns into this internal guru for you and i will love to see what opportunities even within you you pull up you decide to grab by the balls and get ready to take out into the world now on the 14th jupiter is in a semi-square to saturn i think this is an important date to pay attention to because jupiter's over here in the fourth saturn's over here in Capricorn in the sixth house space for you. What these energies together in this aspect say is you have got to restructure your sixth house, work, daily routines, service, health, so that you can take advantage of health, wealth, and wisdom in your fourth house space, right? You have to restructure in order to take advantage of opportunity. So you will feel the pressure to shift a bit here. Now on the 17th, we've got the new moon, the only new moon we're having for the month, and it's gonna be in the sign of Pisces at 26 degrees. So this for you is gonna be hitting um, this eighth house space. How exciting is that? At the same time, on the same day, we've got Mars moving into Capricorn. This is going to put action, energy, excitement, and movement and achievement into your work, health, coworker, um, service and daily routine sector. Now, this new moon here is a point to start, right? You can start taxes, do those kinds of things. Um, this is a wonderful energy for if you wanted to make a new investment, some joint resource, do it here. You can still do it here. Please don't wait till the 22nd. Try and do those things now. Now here's the other part. With Mars moving here into this health routine sector, I think it gives you kind of this push. If you do freelance work, if you're looking for a job, this is a wonderful energy for you as well. When we get to the 20th, the sun comes on into Aries and we're also gonna celebrate the astrological new year. Beautiful time, we're starting over. It's just a fresh reset for everyone as we start our seasons over again. So really enjoy that energy. It's gonna be lighting up your ninth house for the next four weeks. So education, licensing, higher mind, um, any of those things are gonna be on the agenda for shift, change, and new beginnings, okay? When we get to the 22nd all the way until April 15th, we've got Mercury in this retrograde. So here's the thing, because this is also happening in the ninth house space for you, it's likely that students, you may need to rewrite a paper. You may need to rewrite that contract. Maybe you missed some information. Maybe what's happening is you're stuck and you need a mentor, right? Maybe you have somebody come back to you and they're like, I need a mentor. Can you please help me? Because it really does bring people, places, and things back from the past. Whatever it is, it's about you need to step back and reevaluate so that you can launch forward, right? So that you can use this energy, cleaning up the past a little bit to have freedom to move forward in the future. So gorgeous energy. 
Now, as we end the month, we have got on the 31st a full moon happening in the sign of Libra. Libra is about partnerships. It's partnership oriented. This is going to be at 10 degrees of Libra, and this is happening in your third house. So with this full moon, you know, endings, acknowledgements, adjustments. In the third house, one of the things that could be ending is you're having a shift in your mindset. You're not thinking the same way you used to. You're not communicating the same way that you used to. You're not making decisions. I think for some of you too, if there's been any kind of chaos or maybe something, maybe even transition with family members or neighbors, you could be experiencing something new with this energy um, as well. One of the other things I'm thinking is, is if you can avoid, if you have a major test or some kind of major event, if you can avoid scheduling it on the 31st, I think that'll actually be the better for you. Libra wants to bring harmony here, but with the energy of the moon, I think she could actually make it a little bit more unsteady. And we wanna set you up in the best energy possible. Now, of course, this will all depend on your individual astrological charts. So make sure you're weighing the energy that I'm giving you or that you're listening to against what you've got going on in your chart as well, okay? I love you guys so much. I look forward to seeing you in class and in every other way we connect, including on Facebook. So like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you in April.